And so they, they, they don't have to worry about searching for whatever. We're going to deliver it to them. It's all for free. They can also sign up on my Facebook page, which is John D. Villarreal on, under Facebook. And they can, they can join the party there. I put all where I'm going, what I'm doing, you know, th ideas that I've got. I put different things of connections I have with different media people and how I'm, I'm talking about this or that or whatever. And it's just awesome. I mean, it's, it's so fun, Jack. I mean, it's just something where with my media background, what I'm able to do is if I'm interested in, in, in an issue or subject, unlike writing an article, Article that might take someone a night or three days, whatever like that. I can literally shoot a video, one take, uh, no cue cards, no notes, no edits. Boom, get it up, edit, it, capture it, edit it. You know, just for time, whatever, because you have certain limitations with YouTube. What they'll do and put it on uh, YouTube for everyone to see worldwide within an hour. Nobody else is able to do that. So when you talk about pajamas media, and we love those guys, and they're a little bit ahead of us right now. They do more like skits and sort of people on the street type of stuff. It might take them three days to a week to do a video, They're like one video. And that's cool, but that's like one way to attack it. They, they, nobody has the kind of range of genres. We can do literally anything within the, any kind of media format that you want to talk about that's relevant for, for politics and, and conservatism. And we can do it immediate and we can do it you know, with a volume that nobody else can do. When people talk to us, it's like they can't believe it's just me and Paul. It's just two people. Right. So, Merced. Yes. What she's filming right now. It's going up tonight. If you had, well, if you had the equipment here. Yeah. If we had the technology to support you, within an hour from the end of the show, it'd be on YouTube. Uh, two hours. Most. Do you? But you edit it. You must do some editing. I edit for time, because I mean the thing of it is, is like. It, it, okay, so let's say I do like I shot video of me around Salt Lake. Now it's just now it's a different kind of thing. That's maybe I've got 23, 24, five minutes of that. Now nobody wants to see my vacation stuff like you know unedited. So I'll put that down to five minutes or seven minutes, and that's what the heaviest editing I'll do. Something like this, it's going up the whole the whole way. So for instance, when we went in and we I just interviewed Jim Pinkerton of Fox News over in um, in D.C. I thought we were going to get 30 minutes. He gave us three hours. Right, because he just loved it, and he wants me to come back and do all kinds of different stuff with him, and do a, sort of a new contract with America, and that we're going to come up together and cover his healthcare thing and whatever. And basically, I just put that up unedited. Now we lost an hour of footage because the main camera, the, our guy didn't have the sound on, whatever. But we did everything with two shot here, and we put that stuff up, and people just loved it. They're like, "This is really, really great." Well, it's uh, I think it's more real that way. It's totally it's more. Real. It's much more real. It's not canned. It's not staged. It's not scripted. Exactly. It's you know you don't have some director in the background with a little wire in your ear telling you what to say. And that's the way I always wanted to approach it because I want to show people out there whether it's you know. Again, Jay Tapper at ABC News, or the guys at Politico, or whatever, that, you know what? And I'm not trying to, you know, talk bad about it. First of all, they're professionals. They're making big money. They're way above the food chain that I am right now. But, you know, those guys read cue cards of that. You take the cue cards and scripts away from them, and what do they got? You know what I'm saying? I'm showing them that, you know, uh, uh, John D. Villarreal, conservative new media, JDV, can do this with no... Net, oh, yeah. with no cue cards, and yeah. for, on any subject that's relevant right now in politics, and just roll with it, just like you do with your listeners. And that's that's the kind of training, that's the kind of, of skill set that you get at the professional as talk radio. Well, yeah, and my, my object here, the goal I'm trying to do, is to just get my listeners to think. Right. You know, and I, I don't care whether their thoughts are heterodox or orthodox, I just want them to be able to think. So I try to give them a constant feed of ideas and concepts and constructs, some of which I know will attack their constructs. Right. But that's where the beginning of thinking occurs anywhere. I don't care whether they agree with me. I just want to put some ideas out there constantly that hopefully is juxtaposed to what they're hearing on the evening news to the point where that's they're saying, a total spin well, you know, and all set well said something a little he had a different spin on this than what I'm hearing here. And what Stockwell said actually makes sense. Right. So that's all I've been trying to do. I, as I was telling you before the show started, I got on here for a couple of years to promote my clinic and the practice because what I do is so unique. Uh, but, you know, as you well know, once this stuff gets in your blood, <laughs> totally, it don't come out. It doesn't. And no. we'll do something like, so I did one of the things on my own channel for a while called Ask a Super Genius. And it's kind of funny and whatever. I mean, my, you know, my, when I was a kid, my, I, I got, took three IQ tests. The highest one was 174 and whatnot. So it's sort of technically true. But it also has that whole Wally Coyote kind of aspect to it. But the whole thing was, you know, I believe, not to get religious or anything like that, but I believe that, you know, God blesses us all with different gifts. 
And I think that, you know, being that I was blessed with certain gifts of communication, intelligence, and just a love and passion for this stuff, that it was incumbent upon me to, you know, bring that to other people, to help other people. I do a lot of charity and stuff like that. So I wanted something, again, with the new media to be able to sort of almost like a Trojan horse to educate and teach people about issues. The Oscar Super Genius is basically take very complex issues. It might be about is there a God? It might be about metaphysical stuff. It might be about, you know, healthcare and break it down in a way that's really simple for people to understand that they can use in their lives today and do it in a way that's compelling and entertaining so that the kids will, will get on it. So if you click on some of my videos, whether it's my personal videos or even consumer new media, you'll see that our demographics are everything from 13 all the way up to 65, pretty evenly split, but we get a little bit of a bulge in that in that uh, 33 to uh, 45 zone. So, I mean, I think that, and that's that sounds like what what you know the kind of thing that you do too, you giving people information to empower them to make their own decisions. Well, I try to make sure that if they'll listen to the show for a, for a while, they're going to hear something they're not going to hear anywhere else. That's it. Yeah, you know, and it's not just it, not just in the sense of my spin on things but in the sense of what's being reported in a media source that I think you can trust more than the local stuff. Because the local stuff is so edited. You know, and it only takes a, a city editor here or, or a uh, publisher there to control a half a dozen different organs that are constantly either vocal or written word printed every day to actually control what actually makes in the news, what gets into the news or what doesn't. Oh, no question. We're going to go to break again here in just a moment. Uh, John Villarreal is my guest. John D. Villarreal.com is his website. But you can go to YouTube, which is what I'm looking at right now, and go into, uh, and then do a search at the first engine there to conservative new media. And then you'll end up on John's site here with all of this material that is oriented and orchestrated in such a way that in just a few minutes you can be brought up to speed and have the verbiage that you can own for yourself to fight the issues that you know need to be fought rather than just standing around and suffering and suffocating in your own inability to represent what your heart so desperately feels and your brain is so compelled to express but you lack the words to be able to do so sometimes as I as you hear me do on a regular basis <laughs> what is that guy talking about um, here you'll find from uh, well I'm just uh, uh, Greta Van Susteren Bill O'Reilly um, Sarah Palin um, John McCain uh, I'm just looking at the, the beginning of the list here which does Limbaugh apparently Andy, seem to be yeah it does seem to be endless and while you may not completely agree with everything that uh, Limbaugh or Hannity or Beck or Medved or a lot of these other people say, you do agree with some of it. And so those highlights appear here on a regular place or a regular basis at Conservative New Media. We'll be right back. My guest this morning, John DeV Real, uh, an attorney trained at Berkeley. Yeah. Um, has go bears? Has yeah. <laughs> hey, how did you with oh. USC? I didn't know. Oh, you know, we got killed. If you, the, the, here's the thing about the Cal Bears and and BYU and you, you guys are are doing really well. Though, well, they right? slaughtered Colorado State, but Colorado State's got problems. And yeah, but, but I BYU mean, what problems. happens with uh, what happens with Cal is they it, it, they're always such a tease. They'll come out and win some big games and be nationally ranked and do well, and then we're, we always lose at least one game that we should definitely win, and we always lose against yeah. USC. So, I mean, there's, you know. Yeah, I, hadn't, I, I didn't get a chance to see the score yet, but I was that was a game I actually wanted to watch because I thought maybe this is the time we're going to do it. We got killed. Because, <laughs> because California has always been a nemesis of BYU. Well, you know, yeah, and I, I know. And I don't think BYU's ever beat them. No. I think they always get beat. Yeah, we do well. I mean, we we, we win big. We have really good good teams. The, the problem is, Riley, the quarterback, just is too young and not ready. If he was better, we'd be blow, blowing things out. Javad Best might win the Heisman. He's a super duper running back. Our defense is actually pretty good. Sometimes it gets a little soft, but then we can make some big plays. They've got some great players there, and they have a lot of people that go to the pros. But you know, we just can't put together that. National championship well, season. We haven't know. even been back to the Rose Bowl in so long. I wanted to go to Pasadena. I had the tickets ready. <laughs> it just flew up. When's the last time they were in the Rose Bowl? Oh, man. I want to say 1954 or something. Oh, it's it a, long, a long time. I, well, I, I was sitting there thinking, well, not in my memory, do I? No, exactly. Oh, gee. We were and, excited to go to the Holiday, holiday Bowl like several years ago. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I think in the Pac-10, you can be 5-5 five and five and still get to a bowl game. Yeah, I mean, 
mean, it, right, that's true. I mean, I know I'm not going to get a lot of love it here. It might be the 7-Eleven Bowl, yeah. but you at least get to a bowl game. My contention is that if you look at, you know, top to bottom in terms of conferences, I really believe that the Pac-10 is the number one conference out there. The East Coast, see, because all the media people, most of the media people are on the East Coast, and they love the SEC, and they try to promote that, whatever. But out of conference, the SEC plays like nobody. Now, granted, yeah. they've got some top teams in the conference, but... All the Pac-10 plays all the other Pac-10, and that's, you're already going to be, right. be stuck with losses and stuff like that. And there's no really, well, there's maybe one or two weak teams every year, but you, you're going to have four, I think we had five teams in the top 25 last year, yeah. and we all have to play each other. Yeah. And our out-of-conference games are people like Ohio State, Notre Dame, I mean Penn State, I mean we have very legit out-of-conference games. Well, how do you think uh, Sarkeesian's doing? Oh, you know, okay. <laughs> you know, okay. I don't follow him that closely. Well, I mean, it's his first year, but, uh, you know, they, they came on strong, and then, uh, who was it that dumped him? I think it was USC that killed him. 